So I was all set to paint the Vanimal finally. Uh, I got the body cleaned up, I got the paint ready, and uh, the wind's doing like 15 miles an hour outside right now, so that's not going to be a thing. So, I'm sure everyone remembers this guy, the uh, the Gate Rover is back on the bench. Uh, I did indeed fabricate the simplest piece of aluminum with two bends on it. It, uh, it just fits. And hey, unsprung battery is pretty great. So anyway, why is this guy on the bench again, seeing as he's effectively dominated the workbench over the past couple weeks? Well, if that was a question you were pondering, or perhaps asking, as suggested by the folks in the comments, uh, Boom Racing Hustler MT Extremes, these are the 4.45 version, because uh, I had mentioned I thought the, the Gate Rover could use something a little shorter as what was most transformative for iron sides was going to those 4.3 inch axials. So there they are, and uh, they do feel pretty soft. Let us take a look at the dual stage, which are a little, I might have to leave these sitting out for a few minutes. Uh, they feel a little stiffer than a J Concept Medium. I would say a little stiffer, but that should be fine, as uh, the tire itself is uh, quite soft and thin. A little bit of side belting there. Uh, what we're going to do, we're going to do this pretty simple. I, uh, I will take... The gate rover, he's right off frame over there, uh, out back into the wind, and run him up and down the usual suspects of obstacles, still fitted with the pit bull growlers, to give myself a little mental snapshot of how that feels. And we'll bring it back in here. We'll do a little time lapse, most likely, of because I'm going to use the same wheels and everything. We will unmount the growlers and mount these in their place. Well, wow, those are really those are going to be fun to. Uh, well, they're straightening out pretty fast. Well, that one is. Uh, yeah, uh, I don't know if it's going to make a difference, but, uh, so far, uh, it would appear that that one foam feels a little different. It feels a little softer. Um, let's just assume it's not going to be a problem. I am going to... Uh, vent these momentarily. I run all tires vented. Uh, these appear to be relaxing a little bit. Uh, let's uh, get uh, our good friend the Gate Rover put together and uh, hit some rocks. I uh, apologize for how much wind noise will probably be in the audio in advance. Then uh, come back, get these prepped, get them mounted on the steelies. We'll see. Uh, I'll throw in some comments about how uh, they feel to mount. Uh, some tires fight you. Uh, some go on pretty well. We'll get a little idea of the size differential between them and the growlers. The growlers are like a 4.75. These are, uh, are listed as a 4.45. So uh, let's set our baseline real quick and then get to moving these tires over. We've got the little microphone cover that looks like part of a rabbit. Uh, hopefully that will keep the uh, wind noise down to a dull roar. I'm 
always afraid that the performance is going to be just outstanding when I come out here on the tire that I intend to replace. Uh, and then I'll be like, well, why am I doing this? But uh, yeah, I mean, uh, the, the Growlers have the stock Pitbull outer foams, but the inner foams had been replaced because they were just falling apart. So you can see the amount of slip the rear end has got. Try to maneuver it over and get around this kidney bean of a rock up here. I just, I can't really, I can't, I can't grab it. The, the, what forward traction I have just kind of funnels the, the rig into one spot. Although, if we're doing a direct tire to tire comparo, uh, picking a spot where the rig gets easily stuck is actually a good thing to do because then you can, I can test it directly, hit the same, try to hit the same exact line with the other tire. Oh, thought I was gonna be able to pull it over there. Yeah, it just doesn't. Yeah. Come on. There we go. Almost. There we go. That's up to the top. I would be remiss if I didn't bring it to Slick Rock, as this is as much of a test of tire as anything else. The Growlers have done pretty well here over time. I can get that. See, this is a section where it wants to push wide right. So we'll see if it can manage to get a bite or if it's going to roll off. The answer is roll off. Try one more. We'll try the right hand approach. If it can even get up out of the hole. Give it a little shot. No. Oh. Yeah, the, uh, I guess this eliminates my worries. The growlers are not looking great today. Ooh. Come on. Oh, all right. That's pretty good. I mean, we're not here to badmouth the growlers. They're a good tire overall. Uh, let's put a little bit of side hill under them, which is where uh, their weaknesses lie and uh, then get to mountain those hustlers. I have to say I'm pleasantly surprised by the unanticipated performance increase of strapping the battery to the top of the servo. Uh, that has proven to have no negative as of yet. I mean, if there is a negative, I will find it. Uh, so far, so good. Did not line that up quite right. All right, here we go. There's quite a bit of sidewall fold over. That's mainly what I'm trying to counter right there. It's holding well. Like I say, we're absolutely not here to badmouth growlers. That is definitely at the limit. You can see a lot of daylight under that high side front tire. Uh, we are at the limit of traction and both the platform and the tire are very predictable. I mean, I can, I can modulate that tire in the air mostly. If I can put it back down get a tire really sliding off onto the poly. Yeah, could not hold it. And we're turtled. Give it one more quick shot out the side hill. We'll go the opposite way out. Try not to get down quite so low. A little rough patch there, all right. Manages a little better heading back this way. Still lifting that tire, but 
keeping it composed, suspension flexing out all the way. Let's see how these will handle the donut coming back over here. When it drops down off of this, oh, see this, the, it's these situations that I wanted a shorter sidewall. Because I, I don't know how well the camera is going to show it, but that the flex on that low side front, it, that tire's just folded all the way over. I mean, it didn't roll, so no real complaint there. We'll try to. Oh, that's about the limit right there. Right. Let's give it a little more straighten up. Because I will be giving away some ground clearance. And like a, an ascent like that, uh, that, that's the growlers. That's their real strong suit right there. Come back around, try to get the under that rock this time. All right. Yeah, a little bit of push right there. And I think I'm too low. Yes, sir. All right. But I think we have a solid idea. Uh, we, we've got a foundation to work from. I wasn't out there for a particularly long time. So uh, the foams still look pretty haggard. Uh, wow, that uh, that carcass is thin. Let me see if I can keep a grip on one of the plugs. Um, come on, uh, two millimeters. I would say the the main carcass two two millimeters. Uh, the lugs look to be four to five millimeters, which I'm, I'm good with. Uh, the tires that are kind of consistently the best out here have a bit of lug to them. And the, the price point of the Hustlers is, is a place I like to live. Uh, these are about, I think they were only $24 a pair. I bought them from rccrawlercountry.com. They got them out here pretty quickly. It was under 50 bucks for the set. And provided the foams mostly match the vehicle we're going to put them on. Um, I'm, I'm okay with that. I, I'm not the, I'm definitely not a high racks and two stage guy because I'm not dropping a hundred bucks in tires on, uh, every rig I've got. I've got too many rigs. So before I get any further, these are now all vented. Uh, I, I do have to say the quality of the foam, uh, leaves something to be desired. Uh, I mean, it, uh, these look like someone cut them in the dark, uh, but they are chamfered on the inside edge and it might just be that they are, they're remembering the package that they were shoved in. So I don't know if it's going to impact performance in any way. Uh, the closed cell feels good. Uh, I do have a small amount of concern over how perfect and round that one is uh, because these seem to be more like a memory foam. So I got three. You can definitely tell those are the same. And uh, this fella, I don't know how well, he's a little bit of a different shade and he is definitely not memory foam. These guys will stay the pinch and they come back. Their rebound is a little slow. This guy's rebound is right now. So, I mean, if there were two of these, uh, I think I'd feel a little more comfortable, but we're going to get them slapped together. Uh, I got to pull apart the wheels on there. I'm going to set up a little time lapse -y over here, and uh, we'll go from there. You've heard my philosophy of we don't give up. 
These are, without parallel or question, the most difficult to mount tire I have ever encountered in my entire life. Ever. Like, I don't know if it's a firmness issue. Like, the pit bulls feel positively hard by comparison, and these are pretty soft. But, see, that will drop in. And, like, there's a ledge there. That, that wheel half will hold. We have to take it out. This, if we do it out of the, they are so soft that it's nearly impossible to mount them with the foams installed because you can see the width there and here's the width with the foam. It, it's pushing the tire about, I don't know, 15, 20% wider and it really bulges out right here where the bead wants to sit. So as soon as I get like that looks okay, as soon as I apply any force to the back, it pushes the bead out. Mind you, I've used these, this type of bead lock on like what, what I call the six bolt. That is most of the wheels here. So what I might have to do is head, yeah, see, just pops out instantly. I mean, yeah, that's not a huge lip, but I'm getting nothing. Like, look at the, look at how far the bead is away from the lock ring. It has to be all the way down there. So I'm either going to have to construct some sort of apparatus. Well, the first thing I'm going to try to do is I'm going to take a couple uh, cheater bolts, some longer bolts, and uh, the, the initial problem is that the heads are significantly larger, so they won't fit in this little recess. So I'm going to turn some of these down on the lathe to try to see if maybe if using double-length helper screws will get me there because... I, with what I have in front of me, I can't, any force at all, it goes straight through. I cannot get these mounted at all, period. So, uh, rather than delve into the depths of insanity, where, in which I just keep trying to do the same thing over and over again, expecting them to go on, look, it's already out. As soon, any force at all, it's out of the bead. So, uh, step one, turn some screws down, give that a shot. I ended up making five helper screws, uh, three 12 millimeter and two 10 millimeter, because you need a 12 millimeter to be able to pull the halves tight enough to get a screw in, and then they can't go in deep enough, so then you need the 10s. Uh, managed to get the back in, flipped it over, and there's a whole chunk of it out. So, uh, well, I mean, we can at least give an idea of, like, it's not a huge amount of height that we're giving up, but it is quite a bit of width, like a, like a lot. Uh, the, the width difference is probably close to half an inch. Now, we will see if that matters. Uh, oh, it's out on both sides. Yeah. Yeah, that's really out. Uh, once it's in, like like I say, I don't think it's the rim. Uh, the the six-bolt back rim is well over half the sets of wheels here. So, we try again. Uh, I'm turn the camera off for a little while. Uh, because uh, if things start to get frustrating, I mean, it's been it's been close to 30 minutes to try to get one wheel mounted. So maybe it is the wheels. I do have some super deep dish steelies for another rig. Uh, I might try just to see if it will clamp. 
Uh, I do have a couple other sets of wheels that I can test. So I'm going to do that. But I mean, these are the Gate Rover's wheels. So I want these tires on these wheels. Uh, it's just, what is it going to take to make that happen? I'm, uh, I'm about to find out. Much like my experiences in the cycling world, uh, some tires just don't like some wheels. Uh, that's just a thing. But uh, uh, we will get them to work. Uh, I had to use the combination of the two uh, reduced head helper screws and go super slow. Super, super slow. Um, these guys are pretty narrow. Um, I, I think they'll look real good. Uh, the sidewall feels good. Uh, they have that overly firm feeling, which is identical to how the rip saws feel. So if anything, that makes me more hopeful. Uh, I still don't like the fact that I have one mismatched foam, but aside from that, I mean, like, I, I could never say that everyone's mounting experience is going to be the same unless you're using these particular wheels with these particular tires. Uh, the tire feels good. The foam feels pretty good. You can't tell, obviously, that there's any sort of, I mean, really poorly cut foam on the inside. Uh, not laser cut, let's say that. Uh, but so far, I mean, aside from that, like I say, some tires just don't want to go on the wheel. And uh, these did not want to go on these wheels. But they will not defeat me. I've got three more to go. I'm not going to bother to time lapse or record any, all or any of that. Uh, so I will commence to loading these up and getting these mounted. And then uh, we will see what happens with the growlers over time. Uh, like I've said, the, the rubber is still in excellent condition. Uh, I mean, they still feel great, but they're not the perfect tire for that rig over there. And hopefully these will be because boy, uh, do I not want to have to take these off of here and mount them on something else. So hopefully through the magic of editing, the next time this turns back on, there'll be four of these. Let's see how that goes. I stand by my previous statement because I don't believe it to be hyperbole. Uh, this particular tire and wheel combo was the most difficult to mount of any I have experienced previously. I think in the end it came down to taking around I would say 20 minutes per tire to get them mounted. Uh... Every single tire popped out of a bead at least four times. Uh, eventually, how I solved it, I will use these two uh, pieces as surrogates. Uh, I would get the front in place and invert, like, like, see, the growlers have been mounted for a while, so they're just happy on whatever rim you try to put them on. But, uh, invariably there would be a little bit that would be up there and would not want to go in. So what I ended up doing is bolting the two halves together to where like literally one thread was screwed in. So they were very loose. And then through a combination of kind of thumb rolling and taking some of these little craft sticks, I basically tire spooned them in place. And then I would get them tightened down just enough to where, you know, there's a six bolt on the back. I would get three bolts in and then there would be just enough thread to get like one thread of the other three in. And then I would have to go boop, 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 cross tighten all the way across until they were all the way down. And with few, with maybe one exception, when I would roll it over, part of the front bead would have popped off. Uh, I think there's still, there's a spot on one of the tires that I mounted on the rear that the bead is questionable. It's got a little spot. No, I th actually, I think I put it on the front, right there. It's, it's right there. Uh, it doesn't show up very well, but right there, it's a little pooched. And I think that wants to pop out. 
But I'm hoping that if these guys sit on the wheels for a little while, they will uh, start to behave. Uh, I think the scale of them is quite good. As mentioned, they're only just a little bit shorter than a growler. Uh, they look like they're going to have a lot more side stability. Uh, they feel quite firm because it's a memory type foam. And uh, there's only one thing to do, which is uh, take it out and try to do what I did before with these and uh, see how it goes. Hopefully I'm in roughly the same position as before. Uh, if anything, the wind speed has increased in the time that it took me to mount these. I mean, aside from a little height there, uh, I guess that's the difference that quarter inch makes because I, uh, I, can't, I can't even clear that spot at all now. Uh, that has nothing to do with the tire and the fact that the rig is just lower now. Uh, wow, it, uh, come on. There we go. All right, this is where the growlers had some issues. Wow, I am getting stuck. Okay, right here. This is where the growlers could not pull the rear end up. And neither can be. It is uh, okay. Uh, we don't rule it out from one drop, though. Yeesh, the forward traction is not good. Yeah, not good at all. Uh, let's try to get back up onto that same line again. Yeah, uh, I uh, that amount of lost ground clearance is enough to where that that line is now impassable. So the line I was attempting to do but couldn't do to traction with the uh, growlers, I'm trying to do it like, look at that. Yeah, the forward grip on these is abysmal. They've done nothing to make me think I didn't just waste the last two hours mounting these. Wow. Uh, I mean, we're, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna try the lines and we got plenty of other rigs to test on, but jeez, if this was a five minute uh, quick test, I've got nothing, absolutely nothing. There's zero chance of this thing making it to the top. Come on, like they've got nothing. It will just sit and spin and not grab at all. So uh, test one of three, absolute abject failure. On to session two, our good favorite, the Slick Rock, which is uh, definitely, this is more about tire than anything else. And, uh, <laughs> wow. Um, like I say, there's a lot of conditions here. This is a very subjective thing, right? But at the same time, as equipped out of the package, 
I would put the grip on these on par with your typical Injora All-Star insert random hobby name here from Amazon. Uh, these grip about as well as an Amazon tire. Uh, yeah, they have absolutely nothing in the way of forward grip. Uh, maybe they'll break in, but like... Try it. Let, let's try them real slow. These are, these are ghastly. Uh, I, I made an error again, which is I got my hopes up and never get your hopes up kids. Uh, just MJ it and prepare for disappointment. That way you won't be disappointed. These are so, so bad. So bad. I mean, this this is an absolute waste of time. Um, uh, let's let's try the side hill. I mean, maybe their side hilling will be better, but the amount if their amount of side traction is anything like their amount of forward traction, uh, uh, th this has been an, a waste of an entire afternoon. All right, hoping for a redemption song here. I mean, God, they're so bad. There's no part of the rig touching right there. That's just an absolute lack of forward traction. There's no diff hang, there's no nothing. It's almost like, it's almost like the rig isn't fitted with tires. Now their attitude on side hill looks really good. Let's see if it'll pull it around though. There's so much slip, so much slip. And it's just pushing the front end around. Okay, there's a pretty, huh? Now see, the lower height, that's what I wanted. That part, yes, a four and a half inch-ish tall tire, I think is what the doctor ordered, but I mean, unless the traction of these somehow radically improves. All right, let's come down this way. Let's line up right here. The Growlers did this with ease at basically steady throttle right here. Okay. I mean, I could hear, there was an audible sound of tire slippage there. And I, I don't think there should be. Let's wheel it around. Yeah, the foams might be ugly, but they work great. I, I mean, is this a tire that needs to, does it need to season in? Do I need some to do like some burnouts and stuff? Because it's the side hill performance compared to what the growlers were doing is, this is much better, but right here, they just simply don't have enough forward traction to actually grip. Like I'm getting a lot of slip in the front end. I mean, I'm not going to go in there and unmount these from the wheels. That was, that was predictable. That was nice. So they are quite a side hiller. They just lack forward traction. 
yeah, that was extremely composed. So like right there, that's all right. That slip angle is already markedly improved. Now, if it would just push the drive, the front drive, the front, maybe this is a mold release thing. I don't know. Now I feel like I was being unnecessarily harsh a few moments ago. Okay, here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna come right over here. Come down here. Let's uh let's dirt them up. Boy, that is a you can't say that's not a consistent turning circle. Okay, did I need to uh, did I need to simple green these down before I mounted them? Hey, this is this is the joy of this. We learn together. I mean, most tires, if you spin them around in the dirt for a while, it's not going to make it better. But uh, oh. I, f I feel like that was better. All right, now let's, come on. What do you, show me, show me what you've got. Do a climb. There's a lot of lug noise still. And I mean, I'm using every bit of low speed that I have. And the rears just won't, they just won't pick up. But again, the side hill is so good. The off axis is really good. Yeah, this is a bizarre tire. not they don't have enough to they don't have enough to get it over i'm just scraping paint uh let's let's try something else i don't know obviously so far this is wildly disappointing because i really like the look of them i like the size of them my god do they not grip See, right here, this is not, there's no part of the bottom of the rig that's near the ground. Back up. It's just a rock. It's a, the, a nearly flat face of a rock. Absolutely no grip. I can't even get a front tire to rise up. Now, admittedly, this is a very mixed surface. This is dirt and rock. But that has me thinking, I mean, I don't know. Is it a trail tire? Because it's, it's, in terms of pure forward traction, this is, this is Amazon tire level. Any tire I have here will climb out of that hole right there. Let's, uh, you know what? I'm gonna leave that right there. Let's test it. All right, I didn't even move it. I went in and got some of the least grippy tires I could think of, the fake Dixie Peck Mud Countries from Amazon. They were like 19, maybe $20 for the set of four. Nothing has been changed about them. They have the foams that came in them. They are class ones, so they are slightly smaller. These are 4.2 compared to the 4.5. 
and honestly, I was gonna, I was almost, I was half ready to say the traction profile. Now you can see uh, the front, uh, the, the front links are all just on that rock. Okay, so let's, let's get it a little wide. We just lowered the rig in place. Yeah, now I'm just hanging up on everything because the tire is so short. So, subjective, yes, but the $20 class one Amazon mud country fake Dick Peck knockoffs have more forward grip than the Boom Racing Hustlers. Okay, let's try this. Uh, let's try this little flat rock section that the uh, that the hustlers were incapable of doing. Come on, get off the dirt. There we go. Got to about right here, and then they could go no further. Oh, it wants to go, but it's on the belly. Yeah, like I say. This is not a grippy tire. Get the speed down real low. Come on. Pull over fake mud countries. Yeah, and see, I have no disappointment of whatever comes out of these because These are knockoff tires. So any, and I mean, look how small they look on the Rover. Actually, that, that, that reminds me, these are, these are 100 millimeter. So these are four inch, replacing a four and a half. And they're, they're more capable. I got to use a little more bump because, I mean, these tires are, these tires are wildly small. Whoa, got that rock out of there. And, uh, and that's that. I came back in here absolutely ready to assign a letter grade and finish up my review, as it were, of the Boom Racing MT, Hustler MT. Uh, when it occurred to me, I haven't really done my due diligence. So, as it won't take very long at all, I'm going to do that. The first part of that involves outfitting the Gate Rover here with what I consider to be an average, an average crawler tire. Like, if you're worse than this, you're bad, and if you're better than this, you're good. It is the Canyon Trail. I have two sets. One set is on hair buns. One set is on dual stages. This is the set that's on dual stages because they've got the big offset backs on the ones that are on hair buns. These are Daphne's tires, and uh, they won't fit on here. And it's not just a matter of just swapping hexes, as you might remember, uh, because I had to grind down the hexes to get them to fit with the SSD hubs. So we're going to go with these. They're a little soft, which means they're not going to side hill super great. But uh, I'm going to throw those on there, and then we'll see what part two of that is. Something like that. And woof, those, uh, those wheels have got a lot going on. That's... That's too many screws. Uh, anyway, uh, those are uh, the Colonel's old wheels. So then, in order to isolate the variables as best as we can subjectively, and uh, I note now, hey, look at that. Popped right out. We are going to fit these to the vehicle that I think is perhaps inarguably the most competent performer in the fleet, which would be this guy. So we will put the, the Boom Racing Hustlers on Lil Yella. 
And if Lil Yella can't make them work, no one can. So same exact three obstacles, back to back, Gate Rover on cut and siped canyon trails, Lil Yella on the Hustlers. Let's see what that looks like. And I think I can safely say that the, that Lil Yella does not need a shorter tire because that looks ridiculous but let's see how it works i mean what do we have to lose at this point here we are back at the first spot the gate rover we'll run that at first the canyon trails got a little hang there Same kind of a uh, sticking area as the as the as the boom racing, but let's see what we can do here. Yeah, the wind is uh knocking stuff down. All right, so far this is a roughly a uh, boom racing experience. Can't quite get the bite on there. But it's just a matter of finding the right line to not hang the chassis. The tires can, can do it. And uh, as I mentioned, no excuses. But these foams are, are, are too soft for this rig. So we're going to get to the top, but it, it's not remarkably pretty. And he goes down quick. So seeing them back to back and going from a body that weighs two pounds to a body that weighs four ounces, you know, maybe it's just a weight issue. A lot, there's so much lug noise. I mean, at this point, seeing that back to back, these are inarguably worse than a canyon trail. Like the forward traction, even on Yella, is non-existent. Just so, so bad. And not to skew the results mentally, but as far as I'm concerned, this is just, this is purely going through the motions. I've already made my decision about the Boom Racing Hustlers. The, uh, the Canyon Trails have already outdone what the hustler managed to do. Like I say, that's why we call this the average. Like, right? Come on, show me you can do more. Uh, the Canyon Trail, despite having a big side lug, uh, it doesn't really generate a lot of grip with that lug. Yeah, you can see those rear tires just cross sliding. But at the same time, not only is it not falling off, but if you find the right line, the Canyon Trail will make it up there. That's why I still consider it 
that's that's why it's the benchmark. It's $22 a set, and you can clear an obstacle with it. So, fitted with its normal tires, Lil Yellow will just drive up the face of this. You can see it just drop traction. I don't know if over the sound of the wind chimes in the wind you can hear the the lugs scrabbling. I would honestly, genuinely like to see this thing make it to the top. But I don't... Get it up. It can't... Like, I, I've said this, I feel like, a hundred times at this point. It has nothing in the way of forward traction. If you put some attitude on it with the front wheel, steering angle is the only way it manages to claw up. And now we're hooked. Because you can't get over that corner. Get right there. There we go. So Yella does manage to get to the top with them. Albeit in double the time it took a rig with three times the body to do it. On a tire that costs $20 for an entire set. Back to the side hill. I should be able to, I'll be able to tell rather quickly if the pillow saw, yeah, there's a lot of sidewall fold there as I would expect. But at the same time, okay, we're at full lock. The sidewall is folding, but you can see the outside tire is out turning the inside tire. It's pivoting. So that is absolutely a result. A canyon trail with beat up pit bull foams on rims that don't really fit outdoes the Hustler on its dual stages. And now here we go, straight up the little cut, constant throttle. Absolutely no hesitation, no loss of traction, even for a moment. And this would be the only opportunity for the Hustler to shine, and that is on a side hill, because Lil Yella is one of the best side hillers here but you can see that front end push 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 it's like i think even worse than the just lack of forward traction is that it's side bite on i mean this is essentially textured concrete the side bite on textured concrete is is poor like you lose quite a bit of your steering. And this is on the rig with the most steering angle and the most capability of anything here. So constant throttle up the line. I'll give them a point there. It did, that was more acceptable there, uh, I, I'm assuming not having to overcome the weight of the body. All right, let's try this, this last line right here. Canyon Trail's looking for bite. This is a very steep line. Trying any angle, if I can get on the other side of that. Got a diff hung there. Try to, try to pull it around. Try to bump it. There we go. And the gate rover manages that. So now let's try a little yellow. Same thing. A little yellow on virtually any set of tires here. We'll just fire up this line like it's driving flat ground. Here's 
that huge steering angle, try to push that front wheel over. And it just, come on, show me something, show me anything. Okay, that's not the line. Back onto the line. Nothing, absolutely nothing. That is not the front axle hanging. Try to get it over that right, okay, all right. But just, just nothing. Like it's moving more sideways than it is forward. I mean, it already can't hold the line. So that is also, like it or not, a result. I was afraid, look at that. I was afraid the gate rover was gonna roll over and uh, fall into the river. I mean, you can't fault a canyon trail reversing down the hill here. We'll see if we can get back the other way. Yeah. It's really, luckily this is not a competition. This is just a sort of indirect comparison because because what the boom racing did in that side to side was well let's break it down side by side the boom racing hustlers up against canyon trails on pillow foams on an eight pound rig the canyon trails essentially did everything better. They were even better at side hilling because they can actually, like the sidewall was rolling, but they were still getting traction. These things, they feel so soft, but they have about the same grip as an Amazon KLR or as an Amazon Dixie Peck Mud Country. Both of those sets of tires, so eight tires, four of those and four of those cost less than just four of those. So I don't know if it's a foam issue. The, the tires are very thin. They feel soft. But, and this is supposedly the, uh, whatever I think Boom Racing calls it, the snail slime, their softest compound. They don't, they don't grip at all. And that front is basically, it's got an, an inch of tire out of the bead at this point. But it doesn't matter because they don't grip at all. So if we rank this, if, we'll, if we, if we semi-demote the Canyon Trail, because I think the Canyon Trail is actually slightly better than average when they've been cut the way these are cut, where you, where you cut the outer lug See, there's the cut there. And you cut out every other block. You cut the small blocks out of the center of the tread, which takes a little time, but is free. I have a whole video about it. Uh, these, when modified, I would call them a little better than average. So they're above a C. But for the purposes of this, if we're going to do a letter grade, let's call the Canyon Trail a C. So in terms of climbing ability, I would say that the average that you should get is a C. You should be able to get the t to the top of the mix dirt and rock at the end of Drybone Valley. You should be able to get to the top, no matter what you are. That is an average ascent. The Canyon Trails managed to do it. It wasn't pretty and it wasn't fast, but they did it. So for that, they get a C. The Boom Racing Hustlers were unable to do it on either vehicle, whether they were on the Ecto or on this. And I am hesitant to give out Fs because, you know, everything's conditional. I only tested it on two rigs, which are both technically just elements, and on one set of wheels and with the foams that they came with. But that's what we're evaluating right now. We're evaluating what came out of the plastic bag that tire with the haphazardly cut foams that came in them. 
So I would give that climb, let's give it a D minus. It's not an F. We'll give it a D minus. In terms of side hilling, comparing these, not comparing these, but let's compare these because I think these did just about the same as these on the side hill. But if we were looking at the baseline, a C grade tire, I would say that the performance of the Canyon Trail on the side hill stands as a C. I would give this one, due to its tendency to push the nose end, it pushed the nose end on both this and this. So I would give this a C minus in terms of side hill performance. On to just raw forward traction, the, the benchmark being set on Slick Rock. And we would say that this is a C in which making it to the top isn't just, you don't just shoot straight up to the top. It takes a little work. It takes a little wiggling. Growlers are like a B plus on that sort of climb. These guys, the Scorpios, B plus, A minus, straight up a slick rock surface. I would call what the Canyon Trail did a C. And I would give these guys a an overall, evaluating the performance that they gave me here on something heavier versus the performance that they gave me here on something lighter. I would give them an aggregate grade, taking the two into consideration. Let's call it a D plus. So a D minus mixed climb, a C minus side hill, and a, I did say D minus, right? Yeah, D plus, C minus, D minus. And if we're doing traditional letter scoring, where an A is four, a B is three, a C is two, a D is one, an F is zero. And then the pluses and the minuses are a third of a grade. So a, like a C plus would be 2.33 and a B minus would be 2.66. This is the American way. This is the way American grades work. So going based off of that, we have an aggregate average of 1.22, which is right almost smack dab between a D and a D plus. And I think that sums the hustlers up pretty nicely because uh, I would give these guys, I would give the mud countries a, a solid C minus. Uh, I would also, I would give these KLRs overall on all the vehicles they've been tested on. They are a C minus as well. And Amazon tire tends to come in right around a C minus. The, uh, the fake Hyrax, uh, I would say can perform around a C. They have about average performance. But in the end, the end score tally, which means that, yes, I do get to go and pull all those screws off, and it shouldn't be too difficult because those tires are basically going to launch themselves off the wheels. Uh, at the end of this review, I award the Boom Racing Hustler MT Extreme a D. Uh, the D, I guess, only slightly tongue-in-cheek, standing for do not recommend. Uh, if you're going to go spend 50 bucks on a set of tires, Scorpios are $50 for a set of tires. Uh, basically, anything from J Concepts. You can get hunks, you can get whatever. And don't forget, you do a little work, and you can get a set of Canyon Trails for $22.00. Buy expensive foams, put them on whatever wheels you want, and they'll still be more economical than buying these. Uh, I have no desire to recommend them. I don't even know if I can be bothered to fool with them. They are probably going to be unmounted and shoved into a bin. Because, like, these guys stay out because they're not awful. You saw these guys. They are not terrible. These are terrible. Different foams might change results, but that's not what I'm here to review. I'm here to review how they came. 
because these are running the foams that they came with. These are the running the foams they came with. Those are running the foams they came with. That should not be an issue. These have hair buttons in them. You can see the, you can see the mesh. These are things that have been run in the water so many times. And you know what? Pretty good. So that's the end of that, folks. You, uh, you always hope for a better result. But at the end of the day, you get what you get. So I would recommend that at the end of your day, you don't get those. Buy anything else that's on this bench, really. They're all better. This, of all the tires visible to you, these are the worst. So... That's a sad to say, but uh, happy to say, thanks for watching. Uh, subscribe if you haven't, and I sincerely hope you tune in for the next one.